Hi, I'm excited to be live with you today. Today we are actually talking about a whole house reset, but I'm also going to be answering all of your questions about organization, decluttering, or anything else you want to talk about. I got a ton of really great questions ahead of time that I'm going to make sure I get to. But here's the thing. I, I want, this is our opportunity together to, um, to like chat and me to really answer organizing questions that you have. And I know you have a bunch. So let's just jump in. Let me know if you can hear me okay and you can see me okay. I tried to open up another tab, but I'm a little challenged when it comes to technology. So I don't know if this is working, but we're we're hoping so. This is the last weekend in April. So why is this important right now to reset our house? You can hear me. Oh, good. Humble bee, thank you. It's important to reset our house because it's May. May is coming. And this, like, I feel like the summer is one of the busiest times of all year. Like Christmas, definitely so busy. But the summer, too, we're going more places. We're just doing more things. And it's stressful for me. I, maybe your house is different. My kids are home from school. And I want to start fresh. Like I want to prepare myself. That's what organization is really about, right? It's like getting ready and anticipating and having structure in place so that every single day is easier. And so this last weekend in April for me is always the weekend where I do a whole house reset. So that's going to be my weekend. It's not a lot of work, okay? It's not as much as you think. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Barbara. You're such a procrastinator. I'm a procrastinator too. I wait till the last minute, which is probably why I wait till the uh, very last weekend in April. I should probably do it earlier. Uh, this isn't cleaning. This isn't a, a house reset, isn't organizing. It isn't really even decluttering. It's tidying. It's getting things back where just everything's put where it's supposed to go and maybe wiping some surfaces, but it's kind of like getting yourself back to baseline in your house so that it's just easier going forward because we have two things we can do. We can constantly catch up or we can keep up. And we know it's a lot easier to keep up than it is to catch up. And we probably, I have things to, I have things I should do, big projects. That's not what this is about. It isn't about reorganizing your kitchen or taking everything out of your closet or switching everything up. It's literally, we're just tidying every single room. We're just putting things back. If there's stuff out, we're just putting it away. We're starting like from a clean slate. So isn't tomorrow the take your house back amethyst? No. So the next weekend after that is the take your house back. Uh, all day declutter. So I'm actually curious how many of you guys are part of the Take Your House Back team. We're going to talk about that in a second. That, I love that you asked that. That's the next weekend. It's May 6th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 9, yeah, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. So I like also doing the reset so that when I get into the all day declutter, I can just focus on decluttering. I can just focus on getting things out of my house. I don't have to worry about, well, I have no place to put anything because the counters are all full or there's mess everywhere. Like everything's tidy. So now I can just step two is declutter. So I see some of you are in the take your house back. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So if you are part of the take your house back team, May Saturday, May 6th is the all day declutter. Let's see if I have a thing I can put up there for you guys. So all day declutter, we are decluttering all day. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's 8 a.m. Central time to 4 p.m. Or maybe it, then it must be nine to five. I don't know. Listen, it's all freaking day. <laughs> and it's it's going to be exhausting, but also amazing. So what you're going to need for the all day declutter is, um, sorry, let me take that off. What you're going to need for the all day declutter is we call them donatable donation boxes. It's just code for cardboard boxes that you don't care about. So you can just donate the whole thing and you don't have to take stuff out of the containers that you like. So we're not using totes. We're just using cardboard boxes. You can get a lot of these from 
free from liquor stores. You can get them. They're like really sturdy for dishes and things like that. You can get them from most grocery stores. We'll give you boxes or you can purchase them pretty inexpensively from home stores like Home Depot or something like that. You are also going to need black trash bags. And I recommend you have clear trash bags just because sometimes it feels really wrong to put... <laughs> You know what I mean? Sometimes it feels really wrong to put your nice things like clothing in a trash bag to donate. It feels, especially if you're really reluctant to let go. Um, so yeah, that's all freaking day on a Saturday, May 6th. But whether you're part of of Take Your House Back or not, I think this weekend is a really good weekend to reset your house. How often do I reset? I usually reset my house once every two months. So I go through and I just, it's like tidy. You know, a lot of people do this if they have a cleaning company that comes in, they reset, they clean before the cleaning lady comes. Or if you're having like guests come over or something, you reset your house. This is basically what we're doing. We're resetting the house for spring. We're just going through and, and tidying. And the reason that I think this is so important because not only is your house going to look super fab, but it's a really good time to kind of see which rooms in your house are past your clutter threshold. And what that means is your clutter threshold is how much stuff you can manage in your house, you, and everybody has a different clutter threshold. But if you can't tidy up a space I'm going to say, I'm going to give you time and say a half an hour. If you can't tidy your kitchen in 30 minutes, you have too much stuff. If you can't tidy your bedroom, put everything away, hang up all the clothes, put things away in 30 minutes, you have too much stuff. So go room by room and do this reset. And it's going to be like a neon sign of which areas of your home are out of control. Because if you can't tidy it quickly, that means you don't have places for this stuff to go really easily. You can't just like pick this up and put it back in a shelf or pick it up and put it where it goes in a closet because those spaces are probably full, which means now you have to stuff shuffle. Now you have to stack. Now you have to cram. You got to take everything out and like make it micro in order to put it away, which is taking a ton of time. You shouldn't have to do that. So if you are taking Honestly, it shouldn't even be a half an hour, but maybe like you've let it go a really long time. So if it takes more than 30 minutes to reset your bedroom, you have to declutter. If it takes more than 30 minutes to reset your bathroom or kitchen or whatever it is, you have way too much stuff. So th this is it. Let's do this. Let's reset our house together this weekend. And where do you start the reset? The first place is the kitchen. Reset your kitchen. Put do the dishes, put the things that are on the counter that you don't use every single day, give them a home. And I know you're thinking, okay, I, I don't have space for the blender that I rarely use, or I don't have space for the crock pot, or I don't have space for the X, Y, Z. I guarantee there are things in your cabinets that you do not use. Big things like roasting pans, soup pots, Anything that you only use once or twice a year, it's okay to store them in the garage, in a shed, in a basement, in an attic. It's okay to get those things out of the kitchen to make room for the everyday things because you're going to feel better when, and it's going to be faster um, to, to keep your kitchen tidier when you've given things a home, like a real home. So we're resetting the kitchen first and resetting the bedroom and then main living areas. Let's just get them to a point where it's like, yes, they're done. It's okay if your kids come in and trash it five seconds later. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You're still going to be way better off than you were before you had done it. So this is fun. Put on some sneakers, maybe throw on an apron, some music, or an audio, like an, an audio book, or a podcast, and we're going to reset together. Okay, so I'm going to start answering some of your questions here. Nana, Nana Maggie, nothing's ever a dumb question. Are X labels, other than shredding them, staples so annoying 
um, has it has all your information on it and you understand for new meds, but what about ongoing meds? So are you talking about like when you get your medication and they give you the sheet, like the paperwork that's stapled to it? What do you do with that stuff? Honestly, I immediately get rid of it. Like I immediately rip it up into pieces and throw it in the trash because I just don't need that. Now, I do have a household management binder that has lists of all the medication I'm on, what the dosage is. And if something changes, I do update that. But that type of paper is totally useless. And you don't have to worry so much of like shredding it into a million pieces. It's okay to just tear it up a little bit and throw it in the in the recycling or throw it in the trash. Like don't overthink it. But that stuff you you shouldn't be keeping. That's just more clutter. It's one more thing in your brain that you have to remember that you own and where it is. And so listen, Maggie, it's leaving. It's leaving. And even better than that, why not tell the pharmacist you don't want it? So I am in the habit now, anytime I buy anything, I just like at the store, if it's something that I'm not going to return like groceries or medication, I just say no receipt, please. And then at the end of the year, I'll go to my pharmacy and I'll request a printout for all the whole year um, for tax purposes. But I just say no thanks, no thanks to the receipt. If we're getting fast food, anything that if it's not clothing or something that I might have to return, no receipt, please. No, thank you. I don't because I just shove it in my purse to die. I shove it in my purse to die. So absolutely. I just um, that's a hard no. Okay. Um, I'm so excited to see so many of you here. This is awesome. I have a quick question here from Teresa Bradley. She says, hi, I love your Take Your House Back course with Dawn and Dana, which is on sale right now. Shameless plug for $94. It goes back to $600 on Wednesday. That includes the Take Your House Back all day, like live declutter too. So shameless plug. If you're not part of Take Your House Back, please join Take Your House Back. Um, so, okay. So Teresa says she's 75% of the way decluttered and pretty organized at this point. However, photos and sentimental items are still really hard for you. What are in-depth examples of how to limit and organize photos and school memorabilia? She has memory bins for each person in the house and she has space. She just needs better methods. So getting started and staying on track will be attainable. I love this question. I love it because I feel like that's this one area that I have under control is like mementos and special things. So here's what I do. I have a big basket that's in my entranceway that anytime anything is even remotely special, I throw it in the basket. It doesn't matter if it's a trophy, if it's a medal that my kids don't necessarily want in their room, an obituary that I cut out, a special card with a handwritten note, whoever the family member is for, it doesn't matter. I throw it all into one memory basket that's really easy to access at all times. It's up high, so my kids aren't going to get into it, but I just toss the things in. And then one day a year, I go through and I sort that. And here's what I do. This is from, I almost punched myself in the face, is from Walmart. It's like a $10 accordion file folder. And it's divided with for paper school memories for my kids by grade. If you haven't done this, it's not the end of the world. But if you have little kids, this is a, a really good concept. If your kids are already older and you haven't done this, just get a box with their name on it. It's going to be a discovery box. We don't need to organize it. They can go through. So like a large paper box, this paper box isn't large enough, but you can see the ones behind me. You're just going to get a large paper box and you're just going to have one for each kid. And then you want a bigger tote, a big Rubbermaid tote for maybe trophies or I don't know, their first Halloween costume, their baby shoes more like physical mementos. And that's also where you can keep photos. So I love organizing photos. This says random, but uh, mine are packed away in my, in my memory bins. But photo boxes like this are so inexpensive. They sell them at the dollar store. They sell them at Michael's. Line it with acid-free paper. Just put some acid-free paper in the bottom. And then 
toss your photos in here. If you have really big photos, just get a bigger photo box and then store that inside your big tote. And again, you only have to sort this one day a year, one day a year for like an hour. The rest of the time you're putting everything in your to be sorted later memory bin, if this makes sense. To be sorted later. later. Yeah. You're right. Please join now and don't pay 600. It's beyond worth it. Please join life changing. Thank you. I, I, um, I, I love the take your house back course. You know, I don't sell you guys. I'm not like buy this things all the time. Gross. But, uh, the take your house back does end on Wednesday and then our all day live declutter is, um, Saturday, May 6th. And so we do have payment plans. Yes. Snowbird. We do have payment plans. I think it's $33 every month for three months or something. It's whatever adds up to $94. So absolutely um, amazing. It's It will change your life. And again, how do you know if you need to declutter more? If you can't reset a space in 30 minutes or less, you have way too much stuff. Like that is a cue. If it takes you longer than that, um, honestly, it's probably five minutes for me to reset most of the spaces in my home now because I've decluttered so much and I've got these organizing systems in place. But we tell ourselves this lie that we just need to get organized and then we'll have room for everything. And the truth is that organizing actually takes up space a lot of the time because you're giving things breathing room. You're sorting things so that it's not all cr crammed together. So it's easy to find and easy to put away. And that actually takes up more space. So if you're telling yourself, I don't have to declutter, I just have to get organized, but you don't have, you can't put things away quickly and you don't have room for everything. Here's a hard truth. You have way too much stuff. And I know decluttering is hard, but if you could join us on the all day declutter, it's literally all day. We're decluttering together live, just like this, where you can ask me questions and I could say, put it in the box. <laughs> I say, put it, put that in the box. No, I mean, sometimes I'm like, hey, you should keep that. But we're all doing it together. I think there's going to be over 10,000 of us decluttering our homes together at the exact same time with no judgment, just all love. So I shared that link again with you. Um, but let's answer some questions. Uh, Mary Beth, you followed Don and I for the past couple of months and I've you, we've helped your mindset. Thank you. Watched hours of videos, implemented a little, but haven't taken much action. Why? Mary Beth, can I just guess, can I guess your organizing style is probably a detailed organizer. So either a bee or a cricket, you might think you're a butterfly, but I think if you're just really struggling to get started nine times out of 10, it's because you're an overthinker very detailed, very logical. You have that perfectionist mindset, which actually causes something called perfectionism paralysis because you want to know exactly step-by-step -step how to do it. You want to plan before you start. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to fail. You don't want to get started something that you can't finish. And so that feels so overwhelming that you do nothing at all. And, and we can say, and that's the thing we say. We, I mean, we break down the steps for you and it's like, start with trash, start with trash. But that can feel like, it can feel almost, I don't know, condescending when you're in a space that's like everywhere and you're just like, no, like I want to just get it done and I want to know exactly what it's going to look like at the end. And what I'm here to tell you is that thought mentality of I want to visualize, I want to know exactly what it's going to look like. I want to know what I need to buy. I want to know exactly where everything's going to go is why you've had a hard time getting started. That perfection paralysis is actually causing you to live in a house that you hate and feel overwhelmed and stressed. And so I want you to remind yourself of this. Literally pick up a trash bag right now as you're watching this. Please, please look around. 
Is there garbage? Do you have empty boxes? Do you have empty wrappers? Do you have old bills you've already paid? Do you have receipts? Do you have actual trash? And get it out. Go to your fridge. Look at your salad dressings. I know you're like, well, why? who cares about that? My, I can't even see my counter. But this is how we get the ball rolling. This is how we break through your perfection paralysis. This is how we just need to start taking small steps in order for it to like become not so big of a deal. So we start with trash. That's it. That's what we do. And the duh clutter, yes. We got to stop trying to visualize the end because we got to start looking for a plan and looking for the containers and wanting to know all the steps because this is the death of real progress. It really is. And so when you're this weekend resetting your house, please keep this in mind too. This isn't about perfection. This isn't about f- creating homes for stuff that doesn't have homes. If you're like, picking up a bunch of clutter and you're like, I have no idea where this could go. We're not, we're not taking things out and decluttering and making our house a bigger mess. Where would you look for this first? If it wasn't on the pile on the counter, put it there right now, just shove it in there. Where would you look for this first? We are getting to like a, a tidy ish house so that next weekend we can dig deep and declutter and get stuff out. We can peel back those layers of the onion and make real progress because the only way you're going to have a home, the only, like I'm telling you, the only way you're going to have a home that stays, that doesn't feel like effort, we're always going to have to do dishes. We are. We're always going to have to do laundry, but you're not always going to have to pick up stuff before you can wipe the table or the counter. You're not always going to have to pick stuff off the floor before you have to vacuum. The reason you have to do those things are because it's not easy to put that stuff away. So you're in the habit of just putting stuff down. To get stuff easy to put away, we have to have less stuff. And it isn't the stuff you see. That's not it. It's all the stuff in the closets and the drawers and the cabinets. And that's what we're going to do on the all day declutter. Linda, sometimes I do have Penny in the office with me, but she's not here today. She's upstairs with the kids. Okay. This breaks my heart. This breaks my heart. So, um, the comment, yes, I hate myself. I really didn't like myself when my house was under control and I don't like out of control. I mean, I don't know if it's because my house was out of control that I didn't like myself or because I wasn't really happy with myself that my house was out of control. I don't know like what came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing, but I can tell you without a doubt when you fight for yourself, when you fight and, and I can't fix up here, but I can fix this in 10 minutes. 15 minutes. I can make a difference there that I can see. And this got better. And so the more I was like, enough is enough. I deserve better than this. I am more important than this junk from Walmart. And I just was, I was standing up for myself and putting boundaries on myself and just grabbing a trash bag and not worrying, is this recyclable? And what, maybe I should donate this. And am I going to regret this? And oh, am I going to make a decision that I'm, am I going to need this again? And I can't really afford to buy it again. And then all those thoughts used to stop me from decluttering at all. And I would just put it back down and say, I'll do it another day when I have more time and never get better and never get better. I had to get mad. I had to get fierce for myself. I had to fight for myself and say, I don't care. I'm more important. Enough is enough. And just put it in the bag. And I'm going to tell you, I regret nothing that I've let go of. I am so happy. I'm so just Every area of my life is better. And, and this is why I'm so passionate for you guys that I that I'm like, I I I I want this for you too, because 
I, you just need to push through and every area of your life, life is better. Okay. So there was another question that I loved so, so much um, from Catherine. She says, she can't figure out her organizing style. Sometimes she's a ladybug. Sometimes she's a bee. Aren't they opposites? Yes, they are. Uh, what's a fun way to determine the best way to organize for yourself? You are almost ready to flip a coin and pick one. And hopefully I can figure her out. She appreciates me. Okay, Catherine, listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It, it like legit doesn't matter, but there is a fun because it, it's really only kind of important, um, with paper bills that need to be paid. Like that kind of stuff is important. But if you legit have no idea, here is a fun little thing to ask yourself that can really help you determine your organizing style. Think in your bathroom. When you get ready in the morning, you're doing your makeup, maybe you're brushing your hair, you're brushing your teeth. Do you naturally leave that stuff out on the counter where you can see it? Or are you tucking it behind closed doors? Are you putting it behind closed doors, your toothbrush? Are you tucking it away? Are you naturally leaving it out? So people who generally leave things that type of everyday stuff that they use out in the open, it's because they're visual. Sometimes it's because they don't maybe have a place for it to go or they don't have storage, but nine times out of 10, it's because they're visual. The other thing I want you to look at is the front of your fridge. Or if you have a fridge that's not magnetic, is there somewhere you're like pinning memories, you're pinning things you need to remember, you're, you're having bulletin boards so that you don't forget nine times out of 10, if that's the case, you're a visual person. So it's out of sight, out of mind, which means when you're setting up systems for your stuff that you use every day, not day, you're not going to forget that you own ketchup. You don't need to make your ketchup visual. But the things that you use every day should be visual. And the best example I have is instead of like a hidden file folder, put your papers that you have to deal with on the wall. Get yourself things like this or your bathroom products. Get yourself, don't put them in the cabinet. Get yourself a lazy Susan or get yourself floating shelves that are close to where you're naturally putting them down. So create homes for the things you use every day that are really, really visual. Then the other half of your organizing style, because it's how you store and how you sort. So do you store things visually or do you store things out of sight naturally? Not your wish you would, naturally. And then the other half is how you naturally sort. Are you a really detailed person? You'll know that you're a detailed, you know, listen, stop it. If you're overthinking everything and overanalyzing and if you, if you write yourself to-do lists in a notebook and they're like this, 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 you're detailed. You're a detailed person. If you stop to open a lid before putting something away that you use every day, you're detailed. Non-detailed people are very like their brain kind of squirrel syndrome. So they're done using something before they're even done with the pen. They're thinking about something else. So the pen just drops. It's not like they're thinking, oh, I'll put this away later and putting it down. That's not a thought that a laid back organizer has. They literally have moved on. And so they're just dropping the pen. So the pen has to have a place to drop that's super like a bucket to catch it, even if it's all mixed with pencils and crayons and all of those things. Detailed people are done with the pen. And if it has a place for pens, they're going to take the time to stop and go, oh, I'm done with this. I'm going to put it back with pens now. And so a detailed person can have more detailed organization. The perfect example of this is in your bathroom storage, a bathroom closet, or wherever you keep medications. Do you have your medications like all your pain relievers, all your antacids, all your allergy medication? Maybe you don't do it now, but if you had that, would you want to like, you're done with the pain reliever. Okay. I'm going to put it back in the pain reliever. Or are you done with the pain reliever? You chuck it at the medicine basket. For me, I need to chuck it at the medicine basket. I can't stop and think about putting it away. I will take time if I need an aspirin to dig through the medicine basket to find an aspirin. I will not take the time before when I'm done with something to put it back. 
Whereas a detailed person would rather, and they naturally do take time to put it back so they don't have to dig through the basket. So that's it. That That's the real difference. Um, I often see detailed, like non-detailed people have post-its like this everywhere. Non-detailed people are like scrap piece of papers, lots of post-its, wherever they get a thought, they jot it down. A detailed person almost all the time will have structured notes. So that's another really easy way that you can see your organizing style. You know what I'm saying? Does this make sense? Hopefully. And at the end of the day, does it matter? Not really. Just organize everything macro then. Like just organize everything in a laid back way. And then once everything's organized in a really laid back way, then you can go back and perfect it later anyways. So we all start organizing in a really laid back way. But if you think you're visual, don't put it behind closed doors. Don't make it hidden. You're just going to forget you own it and you're going to leave it out anyway. So you're wasting your time. Catherine says, is this you? It is Catherine, you. Okay, your natural tendency is to drop it like it's hot. You have to work hard to put things back. You have post-its. Yeah, you, so so Catherine, you're a butterfly. And that's, you know what? There's a ton of really tidy, successful butterflies, but you have to have like, drop it like it's hot bins. You have to have like, think about where you're naturally putting things down and go big, man, and, and make sure that your important stuff is clear and visual. And if you're never hanging your coat in the closet, get yourself some hooks and put them like, don't, don't try to fight it. Because if you're constantly trying to fight your natural tendencies, it's mentally exhausting. So then you're physically exhausted and it shouldn't be work to keep a house organized. It should it should just feel really effortless because it's complementing your natural, natural style. Okay, Kristen, Legos and dollhouse stuff, it's kind of organized in bins and you do have a room for it, but you are saving someday for when you have grandkids. Should you get rid of it? You're torn and um, and you want no guilt. So here's what I would do. I would create yourself one or two grandkid bins plastic totes that seal that are waterproof that you know everything's going to be protected if you have more than two you have too many so give yourself the container concept make the bins be the bad guy two grandma two because you don't know you like i i love the idea of keeping some toys for future grandkids especially if there's ones that your kids played with and they're really special to you but you should never keep more than two bins for grandkid bins. Don't do it because you just, it's, it's way too much clutter. Okay. Husband is a ladybug and you're a cricket best solution. The best solution, the golden rule is when you have two kind of competing organizing styles, you always default to the visual for the important everyday stuff and the macro. So the laid back organizer, which means the ladybug really wins in this case only for shared spaces. So it means anything that you're both touching all the time, yeah, he's not going to take time to file the bills in a detailed way. Just get a basket that's 2023 20, bills and that all gets tossed into there. Or if he's like getting snacks in the pantry, just have like a snack bin and dump all the boxes in because he's probably going to leave the empty boxes in there or he's probably going to like put things here, there and everywhere. So go with big categories, big containers, add some labels um, so that subconsciously when he's done with something, he can just toss it away. It's not going to be perfect, Cricket. It's not going to be perfect because he really struggles to maintain that because not on purpose because his brain has already moved on. So you're going to have to learn to let go a little bit, but only in the areas where it's really shared. When it's your stuff, your bathroom products, de -de -de, cricket your face off, get super detailed. Whatever it is that you manage most of the time, go balls to the walls, man. Super, super detailed. Have fun with it. But And then that might make you feel a little bit better about those. It, it feels messy sometimes, but it isn't. It's contained in baskets, but inside those baskets, there isn't a lot of structure. And that's what ladybugs need. We need a more unstructured approach, not just to our organization, but to our planning, to our schedules, to our routines, because 
over-structured, over-routine, over-detailed like that um, just does not work for us at all. And it's like counterintuitive. We won't even use the system at all if it's too detailed. Okay. Uh, Carol and Bran, your bedroom is pretty small. You're finding that a dresser isn't working for a butterfly and bee couple. There's no closet. What would be a better option? Okay. So inexpensive dressers suck for macro organizers and they suck for visual. If you're a butterfly, please just burn the dresser. Dressers suck so bad because you have to put things away You because they're shallow and deep. You can't really toss because then you can't get the door open and closed. You you have to fold. And if you're a butterfly, you're not a folder. And so there's two things I, I really recommend. that You do have a bee couple, so this might bother the bee. But get rid of the dresser and get a cube system like this instead. It takes up the same floor space. But the cubes, you can pull right out to wherever you're putting a lot. You can shoot it in. And because the cube is so deep, you can like toss things in without folding. And then like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's still, you can still put it back. Plus you can have open cubbies that you can put, like if your B husband wants to like fold his pants or fold his t-shirts, you have so much more storage options. If the idea of looking at clothes like that, kind of like you don't love that idea, go with an Ikea PAX unit. Because inside the PAX unit, you can have spots for hanging. Plus, they have like pull out for dumping that are way deeper or get shelving with like baskets that you can toss into. And then if it looks messy, you can shut the door so you don't look at it. It's okay not to fold. It's okay. It's okay. And, and I don't fold 90% of my stuff. And everyone says, well, what if it gets wrinkled? I hang a lot. I use hooks a lot, but I don't fold my pajamas or workout gear or camisoles or bathing suits or underwear or bras. I, I just toss it in because if I had to take time to be really detailed like that, I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't. So, and that's okay. That that's okay. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. Now bees and crickets are like, oh, that's, I couldn't imagine, but that's the whole point that like, that's the whole, I'm not telling you guys not to fold. I'm telling you fold all day. Um, that's the whole point. We all organize differently and we have to embrace that instead of trying to change ourselves to be something that we're not. Because then when we fail, we feel like failures and that doesn't help anything. Ooh, this is a good question. Rachel, is an art caddy better for kids art supplies than just putting them in pencil cases all day? all day. An art caddy system, a caddy system is so good for visual people because a pencil case makes everything invisible. I I just wish school supplies are so hard. Lockers, desks, backpacks, they all suck for visual organizers. Binders blah, suck for visual organizers, but there's not a lot of other options. But a caddy is so much better than a pencil case because you can see everything and you can put it back really quickly, but it's just as easy to put crayons with crayons and pencils with pencils. Like you can now have some separation without having to think with, with like subconsciously putting things down and keeping it tidy at all times. Caddies are the way to go, but the secret is within your caddy to use solo cups or plastic cups to give a little bit more division. So pens and pencils can go together, markers can go together, pencil crayons can go together, maybe you have one for like calculators and I don't know, mathy type things, protractors. Um, but yeah, hands down, caddies work better than pencil cases all day, all day. Caddies work great for bathroom products too, like bathroom products. Get a caddy, especially if you're visual or a macro organizer and just have like a get ready in the morning caddy. And then that way, when you have to put everything away, you just put your caddy away and you don't have to put deodorant here and your hairbrush here and your toothbrush here and your blah, blah, blah here, because like we just leave it out because that's hard. But if we had a caddy where we're getting ready, we're brushing our teeth, we plop it back in, brush our hair, plop it back in, put your makeup on, plop it back in. And then the whole get ready caddy goes away. So it's not going to have all your products, but it's going to have your everyday products in there. Um, <laughs> GBs, 
You're folding laundry, super tired. You're pushing yourself through it. You hear you say, it's okay not to fold. It's okay not to fold if it doesn't bother you. Like dish towels, shove them in the drawer, guys. Whatever. At least it's a way. Now I do fold towels. I roll towels because I'm lazy. Um, it just makes it easier to pull one out. If you if they're all jumbled, you can't like pull it out. But underwear, like bras, bathing suits, pajamas, I do not care. I do not care. And if I did care, I I just I, I just if like I made myself try to care, I would be really resentful about putting away laundry. I would. Okay. I love that some of you guys are doing it. Okay. So we're talking about resetting your house. I'm going to answer some more of your questions, but I really want to challenge you guys to at least reset the kitchen this weekend and your bedroom, which means all your laundry away, all the clutter that doesn't belong, put away, create homes if you have to, good enough homes, get stuff off your counters in your kitchen that you don't use every day. Hear me. Even if you are a visual organizer, if you do not use your blender every single day, we're not keeping it on the counter. You can keep your utensils that you flip, you know, your like spatula and stuff. Keep those out. You eat your bread all the time. You like your bread out. Keep your bread out. But if you're not using it every single day, it needs to go away. Because when everything's visual, nothing's visual. It just looks like noise and clutter. And when things look like a mess, you'll are more likely to add to the pile. So you just are put, it's just, it's a perpetual cycle of, oh, this feels messy for some reason. I'm just going to leave my dishes on the counter because it's already a mess. Even when it's tidy, if it has a lot of stuff, it's like you're constantly going to feel this way. So do reset your kitchen, reset your kitchen this weekend. And if you have time, reset your bedroom. And if you have time, because everything's pretty under control, reset your main living areas and start fresh. So then the next weekend, May 6th, you can join us for the all day declutter. If you are part of the Take Your House Back team, it starts at 8 a.m. Central Time all day. We're doing sentimental for two hours. We're doing kitchens for two hours. Um, and I think we're doing storage areas too. We're like, it's it. And it's Dawn from The Minimal Mom, Dana from A Slob Comes Clean, and I as your clutter coaches. And that's Saturday, May 6th. You don't want to miss it because it's awesome. I usually cry and scream and cry. It's very emotional for me. I get I get all like, ooh, teary. So if you're part of the Take Your House Back team, join us there. But start from a cleaner-ish slate. So taking some time, even an hour this weekend, to reset, especially your kitchen, it's going to make decluttering next weekend a lot easier because you're automatically going to be in group B. So I'm going to break you guys up into group A, B, and C. And you're auto like a group A is your kitchen counters are a mess. And that's what we're working on for the first hour. I don't want you to be in group A. I want you to be in group B where we're talking about deep down getting stuff out. I'm getting we're getting to the nitty gritty. I'm making you get rid of those Christmas mugs. You don't need that many. I'm making you go through your appliances. If you haven't used the food processor and it's still in the box and the box is dusty, buy rice cooker. You're not using it. It's going like I, we're being ruthless. We're being ruthless on May 6th. So I want to see you there in the all day declutter. It's part of the take your house back. You got this. Okay. How do you organize work uniforms? You just started a new job and they may have a uniform. So if you only have one uniform, I, I recommend honestly just hanging it in your closet, but always having it at one end. Like, so my daughter works at McDonald's. Her uniforms get hung at the very right of her closet at all times. That's where they go back every time. If you're doing something like a letter carrier where you're going to have a ton of different uniforms, especially for different weathers and different seasons, you know what is a really great option is getting a storage ottoman for the end of your bed. So they have them on Amazon. They, they're actually like cardboard, but they fold up, but they look like faux leather. They're actually really nice and they have a ton of storage. This way you can put your work shoes, you can put your work, the pants, the jackets, all that excess stuff has a place to go that's just dedicated because it, com it comes with a lot of stuff if you're working with a place that has not only uniforms, but jackets and shoes and all the things you need. That is, um, 
an amazing thing to do. Now, if it's just like a couple little uniforms, yeah, hang them in the closet or dedicate space in your drawer just for uniforms. But if it's a lot, you're going to need another piece of storage. And I think the end of the bed or any like of those storage ottomans, it actually is cute to you. Put some pillows on it. You know, it looks like part of your decor. You can sit on it to put your shoes on. But it's a ton of storage for around $40. And it's perfect for a lot of, um, of uniforms. Okay, sorry, you're late. Um, how do you join the May 6th event? So that's part, it's free when you're part of the Take Your House Back. And the Take Your House Back right now is on sale for, let me post you this link, is on sale for $94. It's regular $600. It's $94. There is a payment plan. And not only do you get the entire course with step-by-step -step instructions to help you take back control of your home, there's meal planning, organizing paper, decluttering using Dana's method, but then you get weekly live accountability, you get the private Facebook group, and you get the all-day live declutters. We do three a year. So you can watch all the old ones, you can join the new one, and then every year after that, it's just $10 to keep being part of that Take Your House Back team. So you pay once and then it's $10 every year. Thank you guys. Worth the price. I think it's worth the price too. I think it's super, super amazing. So I've put the link there in the description. Marmar, you live in an apartment that doesn't have a pantry or linen closet, and it always makes things really rough. You're a cricket and you love things to be hidden, and it seems like you're always decluttering. Listen, if you have, do you have an IKEA? Listen, Marmar, if you have an IKEA close to you, I have seen this done so many apartments. I've put it in a few clients. They have these shoe organizers that hang right on the wall. If you go to uh, the DIY mommy, you can actually see an example of this in her entranceway. They only come out about six inches. So you can put them in a hallway and still walk by and you can get the one by two or you can add to them whatever space you have in your hallway and stack them together. It just looks like it just blends right in with your wall and then you can roll towels and sheets. You can store, it doesn't have to be for shoes. You can store so many things and you can take them with you when you leave the apartment. But again, they take up, they're so shallow that it it's like nothing burger and everything's hidden. So it's perfect for you as a cricket. Put your face cloth, put your toilet paper, put paper towels, put all your linens in them, roll them up, tuck them in, shut the cabinet. It's just going to look like part of your wall and give you a ton of storage. So Ikea, they have plastic ones. They're really, really affordable. Or you can go, they have higher end like the hems, but I, I wouldn't recommend the hems. I would honestly recommend the plastic ones that the DIY mommy used. I wish I had a picture of hers. I'm looking through all my pictures here. I'd have to search for it, but um, I hope you know what I mean. It's, they're perfect for you. Absolutely perfect for you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, how do you, uh, can I make a video on how to organize a flight attendant closet? It has to contain uniform pieces for clothing for all seasons. I don't know. I can't make a video for that because I don't have any flight attendant things, but I actually had a friend who was a flight attendant that had so many things. Yeah. Different seasons and all the different things. So do you have room in your closet? You want a section of your closet just for this. And if you don't have space, you can get a single packs unit, a single packs unit somewhere that is a closet system that you can tuck in the corner. If you're really short on space, I, I'm just going to say, I love this idea. Put a packs unit on either side of your bed, then just get basic shelving up top and then put on the inside, the little table for like bedside, get the lamps that come down. And then you've got two additional closets instead of side tables on the side of your bed. You've got two big closet systems plus pretty storage on the top. It looks like, like a beautiful headboard. I'm going to, I wish I had an example of this as well, but I don't. But 
I hope you know what I mean. So it's like the really thin PAX units on either side of your bed kind of frames your bed. You can put the shelving on the top. This is very affordable to do. And then the lamps come right out the side of the PAX unit. So you just have to run the cord through the back, just drill a little hole. So you have lamps and then they have little bedside tables that you can attach to the side so that you still like it comes out. So you can still set your drink on it or your book or whatever it is, but now you've got so much closet space. So if you already have a closet that has ample room, you just dedicate a section in your closet for your uniform stuff. If you are like, I have no space for this uniform stuff, get yourself a little, a little PAX unit that's just for your uniforms. Um, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> How do I organize for my husband? He's always just leaving everything on the floor. Oh, this is frustrating. So I'm curious, Anna, what he's leaving on the floor. My gut says he's probably a butterfly. So he's been in the habit of just dropping things his whole life in really visual places. We can train him to be tidy. It does take a little bit of effort, but let's talk about what he's leaving on the floor. If it's dirty laundry, you have to move the laundry hamper, take off the lid, and put the laundry hamper close to where he's naturally piling it on the floor. He might not still always hit the laundry hamper, but if you just say, hey, can you pick up your clothes and put them in the hamper? He'll start getting in the habit of doing that, but it has to be close. It can't be like, hey, can you pick up your clothes and put them in the laundry hamper? But he has to walk 10 steps and open a door to the closet. He's not going to. He, it's not that he's doing it on purpose or he's lazy. He's just not think like it's not, it's not easy enough. It has to be like, because your brain is off. <laughs> your brain is off. You take off clothes. You're thinking about something else. Your brain shuts off. And this isn't something you can teach. So we have to make the house catch the clutter. So wherever he's naturally stripping his clothes off, that's where a laundry hamper goes. If it's in the living room and he's drinking a pop can or a beer and it's like, eh, you put a garbage can right there, like a nice one, like a pretty looking garbage can right there. He's going to start being in the habit of using the garbage can right? And then we can slowly move it further and further away to where you want it to go. But in the beginning, kind of like training a puppy, if they're always peeing on the floor in the same spot, that's where you put the pee pad until they're in the habit of using the pee pad. And then we slowly move the pee pad and then we move it outside. So we do the exact same thing when training someone who's naturally messy. We catch the mess then we slow get them in the habit of catching the mess, then slowly move the organizing system to where we want it to be. You're a, you'll be a take your house back for lifer. I, I mean, I love it too. I love it too. On May 6th, do we need to turn your camera on? No, you don't. So we have our camera on. I'm going to be like, we're actually decluttering with you. And you are in the comments just like this. So asking questions. And then you're taking a before and after picture, though. You're posting it for accountability in the group. And then we draw prizes for people who are posting before and after pictures that we give out throughout the day. So everyone's posting their before and after pictures. You're posting your before and after pictures. And we're talking to you like I'm talking to you right now um, through, through this. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you make a video on how to organize everything in the house with literally no storage, zero cupboards, no cabinets, like a 200-year-old house? So here is the truth. I... Probably, I would love to find somebody who, who has a house like this to show you, but you have two options and you're not going to like them. So the reason that houses 200 years ago didn't have a lot of closets and, and stuff was because they had less stuff. There was just less stuff, a lot less stuff. There wasn't a target around the corner. We weren't like accumulating all this little nonsensey crap that we have nowadays. So we didn't need room for it. There was like everybody had one pair of shoes or maybe two and one coat. There wasn't like, I have a jean jacket and a leather and I have this spring and I have this. Like that that didn't exist. So your first option is to become a minimalist. If that does not appeal to you at all, your second option is you have to invest 
in closet systems and storage systems for your home. And hands down, like if it's like clothing type things, it's always a PAX unit. I'm always going to say PAX, PAX, PAX from Ikea because you can really customize what the inside looks like. You can customize the door, any color you want, any pattern. The sky is the limit. They don't take up a ton of space of your floor and they're modules. So you can move them with you if you move. You can take them with you. You can move them from room to room. And it's going to give you the ability to have coats, shoes, clothing, whatever it is. So that's what I would recommend. Or any other type of armoire, cabinet, things like that. So there's no way to create organization without storage. There just isn't. If you don't have a closet, if you don't have a cabinet, if you don't have... How can we, we can't just make something out of nothing. You can get hooks on the wall. Absolutely. That's a very inexpensive thing to do. You can get inexpensive bookshelves like this, but this isn't going to solve your problem or you have no place for your clothes and your coats and things like that. So a PAX unit is, is the kind of thing that you're looking for there. How to organize a pantry under the stairs. It's sloping and it doesn't have much height. You're a cricket. Yeah, these are annoying. So I actually just did a video, maybe it was a while ago, at the beginning of the year, organizing a kitchen from scratch. And I showed a closet under the stairs where we put shelving on the side. So you really only can put shelving on one side and then maybe at the back. And so you have the ability to walk in and keep one side clear for you and your body to pull out the bins. And so you want to run shelving along one side and then off the lower back. It's not ideal, but it's the only real way to do it. Another good option for this, though, is to get something called the Alpha Rolling Cart. And so at the Alpha Rolling Cart, you can roll to the back. I use mine for snacks and like lots of other food type pantry items. It has a butcher block top, so it can be used for extra cutting as well. And you can roll that to the back roll it out when you want to access things for it and roll it back. So if you have things like baking that you don't do all the time or things that aren't like a high use, but you definitely still want to keep them, that's great to use those rolling carts. They're really cheap. And you, if it's like Christmas and you're doing a lot of baking, wheel it out, wheel it out, put your um, stand mixer right on top, use all the baking supplies, fill it with flour and sprinkles and sugar and baking soda and all the things, and then wheel it back into your, under the stairs when you're not using it. Um, Okay, I'm I'm scroll. Oh, there's so many. I'm so sorry. I'm missing all your all your questions here. I don't know what you mean. Can we have the link for the important binder PDF? So if you're talking about the household management binder, let me see. There's two on my website here. There is the household management binder is where you want to keep like really important documents. I keep all my medical information in there. Oh, my website is like Hold on. So um, you can find household management binder papers on everywhere on Pinterest. I have one that's like a full, complete household management binder. It's $5, though. So I can give you the link to this one here. And then I have one that's like a baby one that's free. So it doesn't have as much. Uh, here's the $5 one. I think everybody should have a household management binder. It it gives you peace of mind. All the important things, your medical information. I keep my stepmom and my and my stepdad and my mom and my dad's medical information, all my kids' medical information. If anything ever happened to me, it has like insurance information. Just just literally it's how to run my house if I can't. And it's awesome. Let me find the free one. Sorry. If you go to clutterbug.com, there's a ton of free printables there, like a million bajillion, but I'm not seeing the household management binder. The free ones, it's on there. It's on there somewhere. I think it should be. Go to clutterbug.com. Household management. Maybe he took it off. Maybe we don't have it on there anymore. My bad. Well, if you sign up for my newsletter, if you go to clutterbug.com and sign up for the newsletter, it comes in the email. You'll get the free um, household management binder papers. It's not the full, big, heavy duty, like 
everything that I have in my household management binder, but it's pretty good and it costs you absolutely nothing. Um, I see you, Scott. I'm sorry. I got the PDF link. I got that, but go to clutterbug.com and then go to the printables pages and you'll see it on there. You'd love a, a cricket, but you don't know what to get. What would I recommend to start with? You're a butterfly teacher in a house of ladybugs. So I, I love my cricket, but I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're only going to be using it as a labeler, I don't think it's worth the money. Uh, the the Cricut Joy is like $160 and it's perfect and I use mine all the time, but I also use it for crafting and I label all the time for my job, right? Because I'm labeling other people's homes whenever I'm organizing for them. And so for that reason, I think it's really, really worth it if you're using it all the time. If not, I would recommend finding somebody who has a Cricut and just offering them and paying them to print you some labels off and, and getting it that way. The other thing about the Cricut is you have to kind of be a little bit tech savvy. It's a little bit of a learning curve. It just doesn't print labels. You have to design the labels in the app called Cricut Design Space, send it to your cutting machine. It cuts it out for you, usually in vinyl. You have to peel off the negative vinyl that you don't want, put on transfer tape, peel the back off, put it on the thing. It's a multi-step process. And so if that doesn't scare you off, then go with the Cricut Joy. There's probably no reason why you'd need anything bigger than the Cricut Joy, unless you think you're going to make t-shirts, big t-shirts, which I do. In that case, I wouldn't, I'd go with the Explore, the Explore Air, I think it's called. The Maker is a lot more money. And the only real difference is it can cut wood balsa wood and it can cut leather but if you're not really going to use it for that save yourself the extra hundred or two hundred dollars and just go with the explore air does this make sense <laughs> i'm like chatting a bunch of things i'm so sorry um let me see this i've made with a cricket label you can pick any color vinyl but to label all this stuff behind me probably took an hour if i'm being honest so it is time consuming it's not something you're just going to whip out and whip together at a moment's notice. It's a thing. So, so that's just what I wanted to say. Kath, you don't need to do this, Catherine. Thank you. That's very kind. Um, I, I appreciate it. And I mean, are you doing Take Your House Back, Catherine? I hope I see you on Saturday. This is going to be exciting. I'm going to warn you, I always cry during the all-day declutters. I get really, really emotional because, I don't know, it's so, it's life-changing. And I throw that word around a lot, but but it is. When you go from feeling like you're drowning, like your house is never tidy, you're spending all your time constantly just tidying and tidying and it never stays, to a place where you're like, you wake up, you're like, oh, what am I going to do today? And you look around, you're like, I don't have to clean anything. Like, you guys, I, it, it's nuts. People can stop by and you're not mortified about your house and you're spending less time cleaning because you're not managing your mess, because you're not stuff shuffling the piles, because you don't have to pick up before you vacuum or clear off the table before you can eat or, or put stuff like it's just, it's, it's you, I can't describe it. You have to experience it for yourself. And the only way to do that is to get stuff out, to get a lot of stuff out you don't have to be a minimalist. That is, we're not saying you have to have four plates in this. There's no limit. I'm not the quantity police, but you can't have things you don't use and you don't like. That's it. That's the only rules. If you don't use it and you don't even like it, it can't stay in your house. And I get, I guarantee 50% of the stuff in your house, you don't use and you don't even like. It's just junk you bought that you feel bad getting rid of. That is like, well, why? It's not, well, it's not hurting anything. I don't even... It is hurting. It's hurting you. It's hurting your family. It's hurting your home. It's stealing your time. It's stealing your energy. The mental load it's taking that you don't even realize and you can't realize until it's gone. 
I, I just, it's incredible. Okay, Veronica, this is going to be the last question. I love this question. Your daughter has a really hard time to part with anything. Her desk is a disaster. She's 10. Any tips on how to help her? I do have tips. And I actually have a video coming out on Tuesday where I show you exactly how to help children who are very reluctant to let go. Let go. I went to a home and I work with two kids, a nine-year-old Cassius and a three-year-old. And I show you on camera, just letting it run exactly how to get them excited about letting go. But I'm going to tell you now just a quick tip. 10 is the perfect age because this is all she's now becoming a grown up. She's becoming a grown up space. So here's what you say to her. And it's going to take some of your help, but you bring in a box and a bag and you say, listen, I want you to just take ownership of your room and I want you to transform it. And this is all about you and you are in charge. And I want this room to be easy for you to maintain. And I want it to feel like, like you and your, in your, in your teenage self, she's not a teenager, but you know what I'm saying? So is there anything that you see around here that you think you've outgrown that we could maybe gift to a young cousin or somebody who doesn't have anything and then wait, just let her, if she's like, no, I don't want to do that right now. Now is not the time. Try again later. If she picks something up and says, yeah, actually I, I don't play with this anymore. I, I'm happy to let this go. Praise, 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 praise. Oh my God, you're amazing. You're so good at this. Good job. That's great. Is there anything else? I can totally help you. You never judge. If she is like, I want to keep this scrap piece of paper, cool. You can keep anything you want. You are in charge of your room. You get to decide what stays and what goes. But the more you let go of, the easier it's going to be. So is there something else that we can let go of? This is going to be so fun. Let's see if we can find things to give to your baby cousin or whatever, the neighbor. And again, every time it's praise, praise, praise. Oh my gosh, you're going to have so much room. <gasps> Maybe if we got rid of a bunch of stuff, we could make you a gaming center up here. We could move your computer here. Or maybe we could set you up like a makeup table for getting ready. If we got rid of this stuff, then you could have this. Courage, encourage, get them excited. And, and you're going to see amazing. Now, here is the hardest thing for you, mama. If she picks something that you like, and that's special to you, and she puts it in the box, never, ever, ever second guess her. It's praise, praise, praise. Not, are you sure you want to get rid of that? That was really expensive, or that was from grandma. Never. You can go through that box later and pick stuff out if you want. This works for any age. Let the kid declutter all the freaking things they want. Be so happy. If they're, if they're like reluctant, if you're reluctant, that's sabotaging. We're pr proud, 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 proud. Afterwards, if you're like, oh, that was from my mother, you can sneak that somewhere else. Put it in your memory box. Put that somewhere else. Do not sabotage your children having ownership and empowering them to be in charge of the stuff in their room. It's all about praise. So I'm telling you this works. It's remarkable when you do it. If your kid isn't open to you, this is a possibility. My 16-year-old, there is no way in heck she's doing this with me. Body double her someone. So invite a good friend of hers over and say, hey, okay, I'm going to pay you a buck for everything you declutter, you and your friend. How about you find things in your room that you guys can let go of and give to kids, other kids or trash and I'll pay you like 10 bucks for a garbage bag of trash and a dollar for every big thing you let go of or whatever it is. You don't have to pay them or I'll give you a pizza dinner or I'll blah, 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 something. Um, it might be that she's reluctant because they're very rebellious kids at this age for you, but you could always um, have somebody else come in. But remember, they are in, if they're like, I want this to go, I don't like it. And it's like something that's super special to you, you zip it you say nothing. You're like, amazing. You're amazing. You take it out of the bin later and you hide it somewhere for you. We never, never, never sabotage the children's power. Exactly. We never, we never make them second guess decluttering because then they become adults who second guess 
decluttering, which is what almost all of us do. We have the fear of doing it wrong, the fear of making a mistake. Kids just trust themselves. They try, they're like, I don't play with that. I don't need it. Bye. Ugh, I hate all those, those outfits. And I know mom says I have to wear them Sunday, but I don't like them. Gone, gotten. You're like, I just spent $50 on that dress. Stop. No, you put it somewhere else. You let them decide, right? That's the whole, the whole thing. You let them experience the joy of letting go without any guilt or shame, without you at all. You have no say. It's their room. They're the boss. And keep saying that to them. You are the boss of your stuff. I have no say over any of it. You can decide what you keep and what you don't. And that like fires kids up. Anyways. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to join me next weekend for the all day declutter. I'm going to put the link one more time as part of the take your house back all day. I'm your clutter coach. Dawn's your clutter coach. Dane is your clutter coach. We are helping you let go without the tears, without the stress, without the anxiety, just all love, all love. And we're answering your questions live. So please, please, please. Um, join the take your house back and we'll see you guys over there and thank you so much i love spending time with you i went over the hour i apologize for that um i'll see you guys next time <laughs>